part of our attire. That's what makes us different. Right. But then we don't want to be different. Y'all want to blend in with everybody else? No. I'm asking you. No. But you do. You see what I'm saying? And I'm a, and that's scary to me because you not only got a wife, you got a son, and then you probably got other kids and you got other family members that listen to you. And you're going to kill them all. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That is a commandment me and you got. All of us men got that same warning. Right. He said, listen, you watchmen. I set you up to be over Israel. You better give them warning from me. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots. No excuse. Let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready. We coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non violent, Bible based movement. Are you I see? So we ain't forgot about you, bro, because you understand what's going on. You see how they are actually doing their best to keep the commandments now, right? And you see, we're also doing the same thing. And But you haven't learned this yet, right? You're learning it when he was going over with how we all came over on slave ships, how we are the people of God. No one else can make that claim. No. Hey. So now, the fact that y'all are keeping the commandments, because I had asked, asked I, don't, I didn't even get your name, bro. What's your name? Joseph, cold name right there. Right. Cold blood. So now, so your name Joseph. What's your name, sir? Kendrell. Kendrell. All right. So I had asked Joseph, and, and you uh, as well, sis. What's your name? Kathy. Huh? Kathy. Kathy. What's your name, bro? Patrick. Patrick. What's your name, sis? Mary. How you doing, Mary? Good. So now, Mary, we're we're going over with our people that we are the real Jews. Have you ever heard that before? No. no. You go to church? Have you heard of the Jews before? You read about them and everything. No one ever told you you're one, though. What color you thought the Jews really was? Okay. Well, at least, hey, we all right. We can work with that. Right. We can work with it. So now, we're going to read that out of the Bible, though. We're going to read that that is exactly what it is. Matter of fact, what Christ looked like? Somewhere between black and what? Okay. All right. All right. Huh? Huh? Okay, but you don't know what exactly what color he was. Now, you've been going to church for how long? All your life. How old are you if you don't mind me asking? What would you say your race is if I asked you? I said you were Jew, but what would you just say before I said it? You just said black. That is the color of your shirt. Your skin is brown. When we say black, we just say we melanated people. That is always saying it's not a race. So what would you say your race is again? Black American. Now we saying something totally different. Now we saying a color and a continent, <laughs> or citizenship. It ain't even a nationality. You see what I'm saying? Now it happens like that because, like, like the family, they know and like we're teaching, and we're gonna bring you up to speed to where they are because I got questions for them, and I want y'all to understand where we're bringing the questions from. All right. So we're gonna read a couple of things out of the Bible to prove. How did our people get to America? We're gonna prove it with one, with two scriptures that we are the real Jews. That's right. So my sister, how did we get to America? How did black people in South Carolina from Charleston get all the way to Walterburg? All oh, praise, that's exactly what it was. That is exactly what it was. We were sold. 
and then we would ship everywhere. This only shows a small, but this thing goes, it actually had us going back around here. We went around here way more. All of this happened. It is historical fact, am I right? Why don't they read that in your church? You know why? It's because they're not sent by God to you. Right. Period. They're not the teachers of God in Sunday church. Because what's the fourth commandment out of the ten? Do you know? Say it again. Keep the Sabbath day. When's the Sabbath? When's the seventh day of the week? Mm -mm. Saturday. So we don't even keep Saturday. And because we break that day, we just broke the first four. Because if you go against, so the first commandment, thou shall not have no other God before me. When you don't keep the Sabbath day, you just put men above God. Right. Then it says, do not bow, do not create any graven images. Raise What's the symbol Raise of Christianity? Raise it. What do people wear on their neck, my brother? Cross. That's a graven image. Right. And then we'll turn around and pray to that image, bow down kiss the chain and it does nothing for our community that's why you just had three homicides for not too long ago because i guarantee you all their parents was in church on sunday and they ain't teaching them how to really love each other because we love other races better than we love ourselves bring it up all because of christianity Wake up. even though they hold the bible they're not teaching the bible right because you don't even know your race and it's in the bible so now we're going to read that out of the Bible. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Two scriptures just so we approve that we the Israelites. Then we're going to bring y'all up to speed. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 68. Out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. When the Israelites was in Egypt, were they free? No. No. Because Moses had to say, let my people go. Am I right? So the word Egypt means slavery. We're going to read that Bible. Give me that Exodus. Now, you know how people say in church, they say this in church, but no one ever does it. The Bible explains itself. You ever heard that before? Yeah. How? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean that the Bible explains itself? What you think it means? What you mean by that? Okay. What? It not, it's not necessarily you don't have to interpret it. It's actually, it will tell you what it is in the Bible, just like it says in, in, John, in John. The truth shall make you free, right? What's the truth? You know why people actually don't know the answer to that question? When in the Bible it say this is the truth and it tell you exactly what it is? Just like we finna read the definition of Egypt out of the Bible, because it explains itself. That's what that means. But people really don't exercise it because they don't read it. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Read out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So now listen to this. Out of the land of Egypt, the very next statement is going to tell you what it means. Go ahead. Out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? House of what? What's another word for bondage? <laughs> Captivity or slavery, like my man said. So now we know whenever we read the word Egypt, it's talking about slavery. Understood. Everybody follow. Watch this right here. Read it again. Nope. No, no, no. Where you at? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. For slavery. He said the Lord did it. Why ain't Chinese people go through it? Because God ain't do it to them. Right. They're not God's people. Right. We think we equal to everybody. Y'all got children, right? If your kids do something wrong, y'all don't whoop my kids. You whoop yours. Right. God says because we are his children, he whoops us. Right. He don't whoop everybody else. Everybody else can do what the heck they want to do. They don't have the commandments of God. Right. Our people don't even understand that Christ didn't even come for everybody. He only came for Israel. And then we will make everybody else feel comfortable while we be ashamed of who we are. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we're going to go into slavery again. So he's talking to the very same Israelites. You're going into slavery again. How? Whip ship. How did you say we got here? What did we just read? <laughs> That's in the Bible and no one read that on Sunday to you. 
You go to church as well? All praises. You know you an Israelite? Have you ever heard that before? You have. Your grandmother and mother go to church? Okay. Sorry to hear that. Shoot, my grandmother, grandfather, all of them. Bad. You know, but that's why we got to carry on and make them proud. But the way we do so is by doing what God said. Right. That's how we do so. A lot of times we, we shame ourselves by not doing what God said. Because the only way we can make our ancestors proud or God proud, period, is do what he said. Right. But we'll say, oh, you got to, what, what we do at the family reunions, everybody fight for the name Johnson and Browns and all of that. Well, don't disappoint the name. That ain't even your name. Right. Your name is Israel. And we're not proud of that. But Browns and Johnsons get out here and shoot each other. Wake them up. Because they don't know who they are. Right. And that's only in a spiritual thing because I know people got their slave name because that's how, that's how all of us got our names. Right. Now, of course, my name is Israel. Right. Legally changed. That's right. Because that is literally who we are. Right. And that's right. in the Bible to say that's our surname. That's your last name. Right. That is what it's supposed to be. Right. Israel. Because that's who we are. Read on down. So, remember, it said we got over on slave ships, right? <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Historical fact. Read on. Now, what happened when we got off the slave ships, brother? When we got off the slave ships, what did they do to us? And, and they did what when they put us in chains? All praises. They sold us. Watch this. Let's see if it's in the Bible just like that. Go ahead. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee. So Moses said it's going to happen exactly how I'm reading it to you. How I'm telling you, this is how it's going to happen. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. We're not in our homeland. No. We are in the land of our slavery. Right. The Bible says we wouldn't see our land again. So who the white people in Jerusalem today? Acting like you if God said we wouldn't even beat her. That's how you know they're not the people of God already. Alone, that scripture alone proves they're not the people of God already. But they'll say they Jewish. Already in their name, they telling you they're not the real Jews. So that would mean somebody is the real ones. But the real ones don't know. They say black American, African American, Negro, color, nigger, spick, Mexican. Because the Mexicans are our people too. So-called Mexicans. They come from the tribe of Issachar. Puerto Ricans, so-called Puerto Ricans. They come from the tribe of Ephraim. Right. The so-called Native Americans. That's Gad and Yorubanites. You would think the brother right here with the Afro, you would think he's an African American, wouldn't you? He's from the tribe of Reuben. That's right. He would be considered a Seminole Indians. All the wars that happened in South Carolina, down in Charleston and in this area, when they were beating the brakes off of these Edomites. And that's who he come from. But we don't even know that history because they hide who we really are and then gave us Sunday worship, lie to them. And our people go in there. What did your pastor say? I don't know, it just felt good. <laughs> Read on down. Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there, when we get off the slave ship, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Don't our people marry them now? Yeah. But the Bible called them what? So is it, has it ever changed that they are enemies? No. It never changed. Now you got black men marrying white women. Black women marrying white men. Chinese men and women. Japanese men and women. Now you got black men coming going from America to go over here to these Chinese countries because they want to have babies. Yo. So they take our seed so they can get pregnant because they can't do it. Yo. And the Bible says, no, 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 no. There's a law in the Bible where we can't touch them. But we believe that God loves everybody. That's what you were taught all your life, am I right? That's what you was taught. That's what you was taught too, am I right? That's what you was taught too, bro, right? My brother right here with the black shirt. What's your name? Huh? Kwame. Kwame? Yeah. You was taught God love everybody too, am I right? right. We gonna read the scripture to you. Keep on going. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. Slave man. And bond women. Slave woman. And no man shall buy you. But we was bought, right? right. So the word means redeem. Because who's our redeemer? Jesus Christ. Have we been brought out of this slavery yet? So my sister, watch this verse right here. Let's see what Moses called the people that he said this to. Read the very next line, 29 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of 
Israel. Who was God talking? Who was Moses talking to? The children of who? So who are you? That is exactly who you are. That's right. And that means you are a princess that got power with God. Right. You're the daughter of God, literally. Right. And no one ever told you that's who you was. The same blood in your veins run through Christ's veins. Right. And no one ever told you you thought it was spiritual. You thought you was the Gentile. Well, no, you was living like a Gentile. Right. You're not them. Right. Now let's go. Let's go to Romans nine because, like I said, y'all always talk God love everybody. Let's see if it's in the Bible in the New Testament that that's false. Bring it out. So that would mean if they lied about God loving everybody, what else did they lie about? Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 7. Bring it out. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. That's who you come from. So God just said he loved you again. He said he loved you. Now watch this. Read on. But Esau have I hated! Does God hate? We just read that out of the New Testament. Does he hate? Yes. Based off of what the Bible just said, we didn't make it up. No one told you out of we didn't say it and didn't read it. What did the Bible just say? Does God hate? Does God hate? Yes. It's the Bible. But we have to get that Christianity thought out of our mind. Look, you can read it for yourself. So you'll know we ain't sitting up here making this stuff up. That is the Bible. So now, who's Esau? Who is that? You ever been told? 25, 25, straight to the point. What do we call white people in the South? Red what? Why do we call them rednecks? But then we turn around and say they're white people. Are they white or are they red? Are they red people? Yes, they are red. Do you see the blood through their skin? Are they white like this? But they like the paper in the background. They're not white. But we call them white because it means pure, so they put that title on themselves. You know. And then we call ourselves black because they mean it to mean evil, and now we put that on ourselves. Jeez. Now, now we finna read what they really are called in the Bible. Remember say Esau have I hated, right? Let's see. Yeah, I want 25, 25, straight to the point. Let's go. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. Yeah. Right here. Remember, Rebecca had twins. Isaac and uh, 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 Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the younger brother. That's who we come from. Now we're going to read what Esau looked like. Go ahead. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. What people is red and hairy? <laughs> Bring it out. What people red and hairy? You don't know no red and... So are white people hairy people without the Gillette razor? Bring it out. Huh? And all they red, because me and you stand in the sun, we get darker. When they stand in the sun, what color they get? They turn. That's why you call them rednecks down here anyway. Right. The Bible called them rednecks first, though. We didn't make that up. God called them that. So now let's read on. Let's see what his name was. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. Didn't God just say he hate them? So God hate white people? You've never heard that before in your life. And you worship and follow white people doctrine. Sunday worship. Watch yourself, uh, officer. Sunday worship started with him. That was beaten into you. That's why you don't even know that Christ looked like you. You know? Christ literally looks like you. But you follow this man doctrine. Because Sunday worship came from him. Jesus said go to church on the Sabbath day. Right. The one in the Bible that we read about, the one that everybody taught you, which is a false god, a false idol that our people worship blindly. Won't even ask questions to the pastor. Won't even ask him to prove it. So now that y'all know y'all Israelites, we have to live like royalty. Right. Because to say you're a prince or a princess, that means you're a royal, am I right? right. The Bible teaches us to be royal, not peasants. Not peasants. Peasants do what everybody else do. Right. Royalty, you never see them act like everybody else. But we act like everybody else. You know? Because we don't act royalty. Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy. No, Numbers 1538. Numbers 1538. I was talking to my man uh, Joseph about it. Watch this. Yes, ma'am. So now you know you're an Israelite, right? Can I read one law to you real quick? Do only 22 and 5. I'm going to read one law to you real quick. I'm going to read a law to both of y'all. Two, two laws. Real, real quick. Both of those. Numbers 1538, Deuteronomy 225. Got it? 
And this is something you've never been taught before. You've never been taught it either. You got it? Here we go. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. What does that mean? Should a woman wear pants? Should a man wear a dress? And if we do, are we right with God if we cross dress? No. So what should you do? All praises. That's all praise to the most high. That's what you gotta do. You took it off. I was gonna come to you, but I you know you got out the car. You probably just you probably just forgot it was even on your head. But all praises once you realize it, you took it off your head. All right. So now let's go to Numbers 1538. Numbers 1538, read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. Why don't y'all do that? I got my four shirts ordered. I got four more. I got my fringes. Now, y'all been following and things like that or learning for years, according to my man. So, y'all known this for years. So, to say, I got them ordered. We're supposed to make haste. Y'all yes. know that. Y'all yes. tell other people to make haste, but yes. then you yourselves won't. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why y'all stay with each other, and the reason why y'all gather with each other, is because people that know this and know to make haste will hold you accountable. So stop being by yourselves. See what I'm saying? Because the scriptures say do what? About us being together or separate. Get that in Zechariah. Thank you, Zechariah, Zephaniah 2 and 1. I'm going to show you. Because what that does, what that does, is there's certain things that I will go through that y'all wouldn't. But I will go through it and get it corrected where y'all wouldn't. Because y'all are not around people that will correct you. You're around people that will allow you to stay the way you are. Right. Versus saying, that ain't good enough. Right. Right. Because if you require, you will come to me, you will tell me, hey brother, you talking to this sister, you better make haste and marry that sister if you're going to go over here and sleep with her. That's what you would say, am I right? Right. right? But what's the difference in fringes? No difference. And that is what happens when you're around people that are looking after you. Not to hurt you. They're looking after you to save your life. But when you walk around like he was shopping today. He didn't know he couldn't shop today. I asked him. He went right in the store and bought something today. He didn't know. But that happens because he's not around people that constantly is on him about don't do that. We don't do that. You ain't going to do it. And you, when we go somewhere, you going to be with us. Right. right. That's why we didn't come. It wasn't just me that showed up. It wasn't just him that showed up. We showed up as a group because we all hold each other accountable. So let's read that. Let's read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Look it out. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together. O nation not desired. So I know y'all gather together as a family. I know y'all do. And I don't know your level of understanding. But like I told him, if you're not keeping fringes, I know there's other sins that you're not doing. That you're doing and you may not even consciously know. Because if fringes is there and we clearly know it, when I read it, y'all laughed. Because y'all knew what it said, but you haven't done it. So that would mean there's other things you've ignored also. You see what I'm saying? Now we're not saying everybody, we know the whole Bible. It's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that what we do know, we enforce. It ain't we know it and we not gonna enforce it. Y'all knew it and did not enforce it. And therefore, if anybody died under your watch, who would pay? You would pay. Matter of fact, let's read read that. Read uh you got that that no, read on down, read on down. Verse like you said, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. Now go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, three, what is it? 317. 317. It's 3 and 17 or 16? 16 started. Start at 16. Because that blood is on your hands, bro. The blood is on your hands. It could be judgment going on in the, uh, around the family or the congregation that you're dealing with. And because you're not being up front with them and holding them to a standard as a leader and holding yourself to that standard, you can mislead them. But you will pay. You're going to pay different than everybody else. And you're the help me. So if he ain't doing it, guess what your job is? 
even though he may not do it, you're the first line of defense. Because if he don't do it, your job as a help me, hey, my Lord, you know, we may want to do this ourselves. So no, you can't do it like that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You got to say it a certain way. But you have to be the one that reminds them, like, we can't play with this. But if you agree with it, and both of y'all agree and let everything slide, what happened in the New Testament when Peter went to, what was the sister and the, and the husband and the wife name, and they agreed and sinned, and they both dropped dead because they didn't want, they did both of them agreed. So if you agree with it, you're going to be judged too. Read on. Read that right there. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, 17. Verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. That is who you are and that's who we are. How you doing, brother? You an Israelite. You ever heard that before? You have. So you know you're supposed to be living like an Israelite then. What does, an Israel, what does Israel mean? You're a prince that got power with God, bro. Right. So when you don't do what God said, who are you living like then? So if you're supposed to be royalty, what's the opposite of royalty? Peasant. So if you're living like everybody else and operating like everybody else, what do you really? You know how we like to talk. What's going on with your king? That's how we talk. Ain't that how we talk? What's going on with your king? Mind you, we act like peasants. We ain't kings at all because we won't do what God said. The only reason why we are who we are is because God made us this way. But then we turn around and go against God, even though we're the chosen people of God. We tell God, "I don't want to be your son." That's what we do. That's what we do. Read on. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That is a commandment me and you got. All of us men got that same warning. Right. He said, listen, you watchmen, I set you up to be over Israel. You better give them warning from me. And then he gives us an ultimatum right after that. Read. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. So we know our people breaking the commandments. We also know if you don't dress like God said, there is a judgment. You're going to die that second death. Right. Our people say it all the time. You mean tell me I'm just going to die if I don't dress like God said? Yes, you are. So if they won't wear fringes, ain't it the same judgment? Because that's part of clothing. Right. It's part of our attire. That's what makes us different. Right. But then we don't want to be different. Y'all want to blend in with everybody else? No. I'm asking you. No. But you do. You see what I'm saying? And I'm a, and that's scary to me because you not only got a wife, you got a son, and then you probably got other kids and you got other family members that listen to you. And you're going to kill them all. And you will pay for it. Worse than they would. I don't even know what that would be, and I don't want to find out either. Read on down. And thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked. So if you don't warn them to make them repent. Now, if you said and they don't do it, you did your job. But if you ain't enforcing it, how they going to congregate with you and they don't even care to keep the commandments? Can two walk together except they agree? Everybody know that scripture, but we don't apply that scripture. Right. Go ahead. To warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Because that's what you're doing. And that's why I'm bringing it up to you, because I'm trying to save your life. Because if you leave here and I don't say nothing, I'm going to walk away. If something happened to you, I'm guilty. It ain't going to be on my hands. Right. And I don't want that to be on y'all hands. So y'all have to properly guide them. If you know it says it, do it. Don't wait to be told you already knew Like you say, y'all been doing this for years So if you just now all praise you Order them now Mosai gave you mercy But he may not give that same mercy To the people that listen to you Right Go ahead To save his life The same wicked man shall die In his iniquity so If they die like that and you didn't want They gonna die in that sin Go ahead But his blood will I require At thine hand You gonna pay you gonna pay and i don't want that to be the case you understand we see the fact that we come to walterboro today we know it's murders going on all over the place and that don't make no sense but then 
y'all aren't able to come out here and teach. Do you come out and teach in the street? No. Why? I don't know. Is it a commandment? Yes. So what? see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? If you're not doing the fringes, there's way more sins you're not you're, that you're caught up in that no one's checking. No one's correcting them and you're going to die in that sin. Let's get that in Luke chapter 14, 24, am I right? 23. 23. Let's read it. We have you have to now you have to be taught to come out here and do it. You have to be groomed up. But if you don't believe you're groomed up to do it, why not come to where people will do so? Like I was telling him, we don't advocate people to come join us. We don't. But if you see we're out here doing something you should be doing, why not come learn? Why not come join us then? Because now you at least know we ain't trying to hurt you. We ain't trying to destroy you. We want to see you live because the fact you live here, it would be best if you did it anyway. Right. Why we got to drive two hours to do it versus you already here to do it. Right. Then you and your son and the men and the and people in the congregation here, it could be a little sanctuary here where it's all of these things are being enforced and you're being guided on how to do it. Wake them up. You see what I'm saying? Read. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. Aren't you a servant of God? Yes. So what did he tell us to do? Go out into the highways and byways. Go ahead. Go out into the highways and hedges uh -huh. and compel them to come in. Is that optional? No. Christ said that. So we going to disobey Christ? No. See what I'm saying? You have a lot of learning to do. Yes. Now, all praise to the Mosiah. He had mercy on you where you can run into us today and we can actually tell you. Right. But you also still have to do the action behind it. Give me that in 1 Kings uh, or Samuels 2 and 3. 1 Samuels 2 and 3. Yes, sir. 1 Samuels 2 and 3. Let's read that real quick because a lot of times we hear a lot of brothers and sisters say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You ain't got to prove it to me. You can prove it to God. Right. Watch this. And we're going to read it out of the Bible where God said, listen, he ain't about what you say. He only about what you do. Let's read that. Uh-oh. Page is sticking. Here we go. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Bring it out. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. And that's what we do. I understand. Yes, sir. I'll do it. I'm going to repent. It's proud talk if we don't back up what we say. So God says, don't talk proudly. Don't be all about speech. Go ahead. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. What is weighed? Actions are weighed. So if you don't do it, even though you said it, it ain't going to do no good. Your job as a help me is to, hey, I'm, I, look, you got to hold him accountable too. Like, there's nothing wrong with your wife telling you, hey, my Lord, listen, I know we said we was going to do it. We ain't did this yet. We got to hurry up now. I don't want to die and I don't want to see you die. What's wrong with saying it that way? What's wrong with that? You have some men don't want to accept that from their wife. Some men are so puffed up and mighty that they can't understand that she's trying to save them too. So if she do come to you because it's something that we're reading or something y'all have gone over together. And she see that it's not being implemented. And she like, listen, we can't keep on waiting on this. Don't get mad at her. We like, you know what? You're right. We got to get this thing straight. So that way when we teach the people, we're not hypocrites. Y'all have any questions for us? Any question. Don't matter what it is. Anything that y'all may not understand in the Bible that you've gone over. We could go over it. Anything that you may want to know more about us. Any questions y'all got for us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praises. I didn't know what I was missing, but I see what I'm missing now. All praises to the Muslim. I guess I'm here somewhere where you guys meet at. I'm here. Yes. Okay. So the address is on there and our website and our phone number. Call us. Okay. Y'all come and see it for yourself. Psh, ain't nobody. What well, we gonna we gonna fight you? What we gonna do? <laughs> oh, we fought you guys already. Well, all praises. Uh, we talking to the ministry and everything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, uh, yeah, man. I, I appreciate this. I appreciate coming out here today because you built the bond on the feet. I know I'm lacking now. Oh, like great. You said, man, without the fringes on, man, you can tell a lot about it. Too. Yeah, because I, I look, we, we know, I know for a fact when I see someone 
that knows they Israel, if they don't wear fringes, and when it'd be different if we was at work and you had a uniform. Right, right, right. It's different. You had you had a uniform. But we ain't at work, ain't nobody what's going on outside? Right. Nothing. And then we'll sit up there and won't wear the fringes, leading me to believe you're more ashamed. You're ashamed. Because it looks different and other people will ask you questions and are you prepared to answer the questions? Matter of fact, Isaiah 45, 17. Also, you got a bow on your head. I have to ask you about it. Do you think that's manly? No, I'm asking you. If you saw me with a bow in my head, wrapped around my head with a bow, would you think I was manly? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises, but I'm asking you, because you know how you'll see a young child, a little baby, you'll see a baby boy and a baby girl. They always put, you know how they wear the bow around the big head babies when they're born in. All of us got big heads. So then, <laughs> they put the little pink bow around our heads on the girl. But why don't they put a bow on the boy? No, 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 it's not on the her. It's literally around the head, or around the head like a headband. Yeah, he has a head to put it on, but why don't they put it on him with a blue bow? But they'll put the pink bow on the girl. Because there is a, dis a distinction, bruh. Everyone knows that it's manly or feminine to do. When the, we look at kids, we'll do it, but then we get older, we won't. Don't wear no bow on your head, bruh. Right. <laughs> so, I, I got a question. Yes. I wear this to tie your hair up okay okay so why don't tie it in a bow why not just make a tie and just keep your hair up like that and then when you leave why does it why did it have to be a bow okay did y'all see a bow or did i only see a bow he said i told you because he's seen it uh, when you sent me the picture, uh, you had yes, the picture of them earlier, and I seen that in your head, and I told her, I didn't get you for that. So if uh, I forgot, I didn't do my part and call it back and say, hey, don't go back up there. Like that. No, it ain't no go back up there like that. Listen, there's other ways to tie your hair up. We've had, shoot, we've had brothers that had dreads. Now, they've cut them off, but shoot, he used to have dreads, and they literally would tie it back, and if they had to go up, they would tie it up, but it wasn't no bow. It's just a wrap. Yours was literally a look, bow. What you saying? It looked like a bow. Right. That's what it looked like. Right. I just said that's what it looked like. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. No, I get it. I know he didn't do it on purpose. I get what that he didn't do it on purpose. I get that he didn't do it on purpose. I understand he didn't do it on purpose. You know how to put a bow on your shoe, right? On your shoestring. Right, that's the bow. That's the same kind of bow. No, 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 no. If it looks like, that look like a bow to me. That's how it looked. That's why I asked about it. You didn't do it on purpose is what sound like you're saying to me that you didn't mean to put it in something that looked like a bow. That's what it that's what it sound like you're saying. But to me, it did not it doesn't look manly for a man to have his hair tied up and it got a bow like a woman would do. Because the scriptures say we can't be effeminate at all. Right. Give me that in first Corinthians. And I'm gonna read it to you, six and nine. I'm gonna show you, and that's why even even the tendency of being effeminate is a problem with God. It ain't even that you gotta be gay. It could be that you just have women tendencies and God will punish us for that. You understand? Now we're going to read it. I'm going to read it out of the Bible. That's why when I saw the bow, that's the first thing I thought. Now you didn't mean to put it where it looked like a bow. You say you didn't put it in the bow. So you didn't mean to set it there that way. But that's the way it appears to someone looking at you. Because when I'm looking at you, I'm like, it looked like a bow to me. And as he himself, he said it looked like a bow to him. So even, even your father and mother thought it looked like a bow. Even though you didn't do it on purpose. 
that's not a bow. That's just a, that's just something over her head. Now she may she she's a female and she wouldn't. Oh. Yeah, no, that's not a bow because you don't even see anything on her head. That's just going around. If you if you tie like the knot like you do your shoestring and you put it on the back of your head, that's a bow. That's a bow. So we're gonna read this that even we can't have any tendencies of being effeminate as men. Because a lot of men are emotional. When correction comes, that's just like brothers in the street, they'll correct each other and then they'll shoot each other. We can't be like that. That's not a warrior because we're trying to save each other life. Right. But then sometime we'll move in an effeminate way and cannot take correction. That is effeminate. Right. But let's read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 9. Read out. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we all know what that means. The unrighteous ain't going to get the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators uh -huh. nor idolaters. So we cannot be fornicators or idolaters. Go ahead. Nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor what? Nor effeminate. So us men cannot have any ways of women. Right. Any ways. Because God don't expect for the women to lead. He expect us to. Right. But how are we gonna lead if 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 they run us? I have a wife. She don't run me. Right. No, 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 no. Now she she will if I'm going off. She said, "Hey, my lord, I don't think you should do that." Listen, I know you tired, but y'all got camp today, and I know you. You don't like missing camp. Yeah, it's gonna tear you up if you stay here at the house and don't go. You know what? You right. Let me get up. She'll do that, but ain't no way you finna tell me that. Oh, I'm running the house. No, ma'am. It's not how that goes. But a lot of our men are effeminate to rely on the women to take care of them. They rely on women to give them counsel on everything. There's nothing wrong with a mother telling the son, look, don't get this type of woman, because she would know. Right. She would know. But it also, the father's job is to tell that son too, don't get this type of woman. But then he can also say, be this type of man. Right. Read on down. So we cannot be effeminate. Go ahead. Nor abuses of themselves. With mankind, so we said no. So, so people to be sodomites—that's that, totally separate than just being effeminate. So you can have a man that will say he's not effeminate or not gay, but if he act like a woman, God ain't accepting that. If he have ways of being effeminate, God ain't accepting that because it just we're li it's listing a whole lot of different ways that we could miss out on the kingdom right now. Is that it? Go ahead. Yes. Verse ten. No thieves. No covetous, uh -huh. no drunkards, uh -huh. no reveler, revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You go to the club, you go out to the clubs, all praises. A lot of our people do. We can't be out here reveling and stuff. We can't do those things. That right there said if we do those, we will miss out on the kingdom of heaven. Yes, ma'am. Well, I would rather you ask him and he ask me. <laughs> I would rather you ask him than he asks me. <laughs> How you doing, bro? Good to see you. Yeah, you ask him the question. I would, I would rather, rather it come from him. <laughs> so my brother right here, why they talking? Quick question, because I saw you stop. What made you stop? Love of Christ. So you would say you love Christ. I pray you go to church. How do you love Christ? What ways do you show him? I believe in Okay, now what does that mean to believe in Christ? You gotta you gotta gotta believe something that you haven't seen or touched. Okay. Okay. So that's not telling me how to do it though. Yeah. How do I prove I believe? Give it myself. How? Physically, mentally, and emotionally. What do you mean by that? Now you know I can keep doing that. Yeah, you know why? You know why? It's because you yourself don't know how to answer that question with the Bible. Well, I'm gonna answer it for you with the Bible, though. Literally, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you again, and we're gonna read it out of the Bible. So, why did you stop again? You say because you love Christ, right? You say you love Him. Let's see how you love Christ. John 14:15. Let's see how you love Christ. Somebody remember, I don't even know the sequence of questions. I got to play it all back in my head. Here we go. 
Right. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If ye love me, keep my commandments. How do we love Christ? According to Christ. Oh, praise it. So now, you, then, then I said, well, how do you love him? You said believe. I asked you, how do you believe? Let's get that in Sirach 32. Here we go. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. So if you believe, what you take heed to? All right, and then, then, then I, you say you gotta believe something. You gotta give him everything: your heart, your soul, and, and uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. That's what you said. Yep. Give me that. First Kings chapter eight. <laughs> See, these are actually answers. Therefore, you can't keep asking me. How do I do that? Keep the commandments I just told you. You see how you would have to keep making stuff up because you actually did not know the answer. That's what Christianity does. It removes the Bible from the answer right. to where now we speak with our own mind instead of what God said. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. 